back in with another video thank you so much for clicking and watching i actually have a very special guest with me today yamio money go ahead and introduce yourself friend hi friends <laughs> i'm yamio i'm her roommate and friend and she is mine this is yamio my dear friend y'all already know so we are here for a very special video as you can tell by the title of this video this is going to be a grad school q and a i knew i wanted to do this when the whole grad school application opened up and it was like grad school app season but um i thought who not better to do this with than yamio because we both went to grad school so before we jump in i'm gonna go ahead and remind you to subscribe comment and like so you don't miss any of my content yeah um do it right now do it do it do it <laughs> okay before we jump in we just wanted to share a little bit about ourselves about our background and you know why we feel like we can share you know some of this information with you guys and answer y'all's questions so um go ahead yummy you go first okay <laughs> um well we already know that we're in medical school mm -hmm. we're here together uh, I went to grad school she went to grad school obviously yes. and I went to uh, the University of Incarnate Word uh, their School of Medicine had a grad program that I went to mm -hmm. and I just I graduated this past 2020 summer yes yes, yes. so and then before that, we both went to A&M together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, and as she said, we both went to grad school. I went to UNT HSC. That's the campus in Fort Worth. Um, it's really in conjunction with uh, TCOM, if y'all know the school out here in Texas. And yeah, we both were pre-med in undergrad at A&M. And it, it didn't take too long for we realized, okay, we need to take a different route. You know, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe medical school straight out of undergrad wasn't going to be for us. You know, it could be for other people, but for us. Mm -mm. It just wasn't gonna be like that. Um, we started off by taking out a summer to study for our MCAT before we um, pursued the grad school route. And um, we really heard about it through like maps and yeah. organizations like that. And we knew it was an option. Yeah, thankfully. Yeah, yes. thankfully. Thankfully. We had our friends. Yeah, we knew that it was a it was an alternative route so that we could better ourselves before applying into medical school. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so we know that it, it is popular like people know of this option mm -hmm. but people don't really know you know like i i can understand the apprehension because when right. we first started we were like child especially you <laughs> we were, but we were like <sighs> what are we sure you know yeah. this is gonna be worth it it's gonna be worth our coins like yeah. your coins mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah so again we just wanted to sit down and really just share with y'all and kind of debunk the apprehensions mm -hmm. um and let y'all know what the real deal is about it and if we believe if it was worth it or not. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's jump into these questions. Thank you guys so much for submitting questions. Also, we really, really appreciate it. And we hope that we can answer them to the best of our ability. <laughs> All right, so did you do a PB or MA? I'm assuming it's she means like post-bac post or master's MA. MA is master's in art, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I may. Mean, she probably meant, or he masters. Yeah, masters. But it is masters in art. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> did you do a PB or MA? How was the process? So, did we do a PB or masters? So, I guess we have to talk about post back and, and, and masters, yeah. like compare and contrast. Yeah, it is confusing. Yes, yeah. it is. I feel like that's one of the most. I'm gonna pull up the nice little <laughs> definition so we're very, very clear. Okay, so to answer your question, or actually, let's just talk about the differences. So, yeah. for a post back, I'll go ahead and read it. This is off of Kathleen's website, just to be direct. Mm -hmm. um, a post back program um, is a program completed after graduation from college. Students can enroll in a post back program for, with a variety of goals to complete a BA, BS. And I think that. It's like the key difference is that that is still going towards oh, like yeah. your first degree. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Big difference. Exactly. So like I had a friend who did do a post back before actually going to her master's mm -hmm. and like that was towards her first degree. She came out with an improved GPA because she was able to essentially retake some of those classes mm -hmm. that she hadn't done well in, in the past. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so to attain a, um, 
or sorry, to complete prerequisite courses for admission into medical school as well. Mm -hmm. So I think the point is, it's going towards your bachelor's degree and it's going towards like your pre-med requirements. Yeah. So as for a master's, that's a whole nother degree. A like whole a whole nother degree. A whole nother degree. Yeah. So with our programs, we had, um, it was master's in biomedical science. Was that mm -hmm. yours too? Yes. Yes. So master in biomedical science and... I guess you can kind of describe how it like simulated medical school a little bit. I feel like I'm talking a lot. No, <laughs> girl, it's your channel. But um, yeah, everything she said about the post back of my master's degree, well, ours, both of them, mm -hmm. they attracted us. And one of their main selling points was that it does look like medical school a little bit. We're on a medical school's campus. We're like mm -hmm. in really close contact. So they definitely are prof the professors. Yeah, same professors. Like, yeah. Faculty is the same shared between um, the master students and the medical students. So that was that's that was like very attractive. I mm -hmm. think for an, a selling point for both of our programs. Um, and yes, I do think that it looked a little bit like the first year of medical school. Medical school yeah. As far as like content, it was a good introduction. Definitely a very nice introduction, especially in anatomy. Mm -hmm. um, because that's not a, a pre-med requirement. Yes. Unless it is now. But, um... Actually, the next question was, how was the process? So we okay. Could, we could go into that. Mm -hmm. So, um, like Yami was saying, it was it did simulate the first year of medical school. Mm -hmm. That was what both of our schools advertised. And I really think, like, a lot of post -bac pro yeah. uh, master's programs um, kind of uh, hope to achieve. I think yeah. KCU has one too. Yeah, there's a um, lot. A yeah, lot of different there, ones. There's a lot. Mm -hmm. So, like Yami was saying, we had like our anatomy classes, mm -hmm. biochem, mm -hmm. histo, histology. Um, what else? Um, epidemiology, epidemiology, biostats, mm -hmm. uh, biochem, bio. genetics, cell bio. Cell bio. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. A lot, a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yes. And I was all within one short year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was really, it was something else. And definitely nothing like we had experienced before. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess when you say like, how was the process? I'm assuming you mean like, how was the experience or how was the process in getting okay. in? Apl applying? Okay. So like applying, um, it really was simple, right? Like it was just like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Two I think, letters. yeah we need letters of recommendation mm -hmm. um of course like your transcripts and stuff it was like applying to college. to college mm -hmm. um if you've if you've applied to like medical school before because a lot of people do the masters or the post back because mm -hmm. they apply to medical school and then you know maybe they weren't admitted that first time around and they apply so if you've done that kind of professional application process before this is professional a walk school, in the park <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a walk in the park. Oh, walk yeah, in the park. Yeah, but um, doesn't require as many, like, essays as, like, a college application thing. Maybe just one. Yeah, maybe one, mm -hmm. like, personal statement. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I feel like it, I'm not remembering. But it was doable because we were applying to a lot of different programs. So yeah. it couldn't have been that bad. Definitely. Because we, uh, we applied to a number of different um, master's programs. Yes, exactly. Okay. This person says that they are getting older and they're wondering if they should go straight into medical school or apply to a master's program or PA master. You want to take it? Um... Sure. I mean, for starters, we don't know, like, your your desire, your interest, your journey. So, I mean, for we would have that answer. Only you could have that answer to yourself on what, especially if you should go the PA route. Like, that, that is a very important question. And I really think it's very important that you sit down and really ask yourself that question. Like, um, medical school or PA school or nursing school, whatever the case may be, because we all have the same goals. So um, just kind of knowing the differences in those uh, fields mm -hmm. um, and the duration of school or like mm -hmm. your long term goals and just really sitting your, yourself down and seeing like long term mm -hmm. uh, which degree will make you happy, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but getting older, 
that's just what we do as human beings. <laughs> we get old. You're gonna be old. <laughs> you're gonna as get a doctor, older. You're gonna be old as a construction worker. You're gonna be old as a lawyer. You get. You're yeah. gonna get older. You're gonna have a birthday every year, <laughs> God willing. Yeah. So um, don't let that like deter you from um, applying like like stopping your process. To the school of your dreams. Yeah, yeah, just keep going. And if if you've applied to medical school before, maybe it, um, and you haven't applied to a master's program or considered doing a master's or post back, I think it would be a good thing to consider. Mm -hmm. um, but you can also get some feedback from some admissions committees. I know some schools they do like a application review or something mm -hmm. if you're not admitted to their school. So you can that's, out, yeah, yeah like get some feedback from like a career advisor or something like that. Mm -hmm. That that would be the best because you can really show them your uh, academic history, your career history, and tell them your goals and they could probably help you yeah, a for little sure. bit better. I completely agree with Yamio. Like, you have to ask yourself, why do I want to become a physician? Um, because if it's a matter of, you know, maybe treating people, caring for people, yeah. helping people, you can do that through PA. You can do that through nursing or any of the other professions that Absolutely. Yamio listed. So, um, if and it, and it's valid if you are concerned about you getting older hey life goes on we have the right to want to uh to customize our life decisions yeah. based on our desires so um if you do have that apprehension that's okay i would you know consider those other options because you can go into great professions where you can help people make great money, great money. and half the time <laughs> so yeah um I think it's really important that you just yeah. take that time to ask yourself why. Because if it is um, unique to medicine, then homie, I think you need to just pursue medicine. Yeah. It may take a little bit of time, but I promise like it will be so rewarding at yeah. the end of the day. Yeah. So That's a good point. Like mm -hmm. it is valid that you're concerned about getting older. Yeah. I didn't mean to like oh, dismiss no, no, that. that. <laughs> I was just like, well duh. No. <laughs> I didn't mean it, to dismiss no, we, it. But we it gave is, both sides. Yeah, yeah. It's a very valid yeah. like mm -hmm. concern for real. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. Next question. Next question says, do you think grad school helps with getting into med school? Yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah, I think so. Um, at least that's what we would assume. I would hope so. I would actually, hope so. they have all my money. Yeah, they have, you know, they took everything. They took everything. <laughs> I was like, here you go. They they like, medical help school. me get into medical school. So we would hope yeah. that it did help. Um, but I mean, yeah, because we were able to. Because okay, <laughs> let me get my thoughts together. Okay. We have not been shy of letting y'all know that it was not a walk in the park for the both of us mm -hmm. at all, um, especially during undergrad. So going to grad school gave us an opportunity to showcase our commitment to the yeah. profession. Um, number one. Number one. Yeah. Um, because med schools love longevity. Like they love yeah. to see that um, just continuous timeline um, that they can see like you started from here and you're here and you still are working at it. They love that. So going into grad school, really emphasize that for us um and it was something that we could talk about in our applications mm -hmm. and then other than that it prepared us like we could talk we could speak to the fact that hey we have been in a first year like kind of simulated experience mm -hmm. and we were able to come out with this gpa and we improved and we built these skills and mm -hmm. things like that so we were able to really add to our application that a lot of students weren't able to talk about imagine mm -hmm. Uh, an admissions committee reading about a student that like went through this rigor of a, of coursework and came out doing you know well mm -hmm. would you not feel confident would you not feel like you know what let's give this uh, student a chance right. like we feel like not only will they be able to get in but they'll be able to stay in because mm -hmm. schools yeah. will not give you admission if they have any yeah. doubt that you will fail out they don't want you to fail yeah you don't they don't want you to fail so um i can imagine that Yes, that did help. It mm -hmm. gave us an opportunity to learn um, about these sciences in a deeper way than yeah. any have ever exposed us ever. I will tell you, I did not take anatomy in undergrad. I know you did, I right? Did a yeah. Times. <laughs> <laughs> but I did not. So I don't know what I would have done yeah. without the anatomy that I experienced in that grad school and medical school. Yeah. That's a story for another day. Another day. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll just tell you, anatomy alone um, was incredibly helpful. So yeah. 
and then organizations yeah yeah we got to participate in those in grad school so that um helped us showcase a whole nother skill set too mm -hmm. um but yeah, I do think it, it did help. Oh, and professors, we got to meet new professors. Yeah. I got to write letters for us. So if for some students that are kind of lacking in that area, like I never made um, valuable connections yeah. with my professors in undergrad. What do I do? Yeah. Like grad school is another opportunity for you to really start over and build those like important relationships that will help you get to the next point in your destination. Yeah. And can I Yeah, go okay. ahead, girl. Um, <laughs> Yeah, everything Elizabeth said was like spot on. So what had happened was um, mm -hmm. like we took our MCAT and then applied to grad school. We both applied to grad school. Oh, we, a, a lot of these programs do require the MCAT. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah especially like the specifically like pre-dent, pre-med, like they're going to want your your MCAT, MCAT DAT, DAT, whatever yeah. the exam is. Um, so yeah, we had taken those exams before applying to grad school. She went um, earlier. Did you apply though while you're in grad school? No, I actually waited. So you were done with grad done. school. Okay, so that's like two different kind of paths. Mm -hmm. So she applied when she was done, which is which is really good because you have a like two really good comparisons, I guess, to present yourself with, and you have like a whole new application then. Um, just applying right after undergrad but I applied before grad school um, and I I was in grad school like completing applications completing I mean, yeah, yeah 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 so um, <clears throat> I that's a good question because I asked myself too like did this help me get in but I know it did I know it did because you do have opportunities or maybe we took we took these opportunities we made sure to like if we were in like a wait wait position with some schools, we sent them updates and we we added to our application and we we're able to um, like if we we're waitlisted, we were able to provide them with like additional um, information. My main thing with applying to grad school, even though I knew I was applying to medical school before the program would finish, was I I didn't feel confident. I I paid for grad school really for a confidence boost because after A and M, I didn't like. I could have gotten accepted to every medical school in the country and would have gone there shaking, quivering, because I didn't feel like I had the foundation for my undergrad. Mostly my fault, like just like I didn't manage my time well, I didn't like really take things as seriously as I probably should have. So I, I went to grad school like to really buckle down and challenge myself and see like, is this the rigor and this is the life I want for myself? So um, that's what I said in my interview at, um, at UIW and that is what I put on my applications when I was applying to medical school too. So I do think it helped me, like Elizabeth said, just showing that commitment, that uh, dedication to pursuing medicine, medicine um, that <clears throat> I was I was willing to, to challenge myself in that way. I do think it helped me. Yeah. I, I know, I know it did. Yeah, it, 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 there's no doubt about it. No yeah. doubt about it. What experiences in grad school do you think helped your med school application? Yeah, so we kind of touched on this mm -hmm. before, like um, just the rigor. So, I mean, undergrad was one thing. You're studying for your Gen Chem 111 or whatever it was at A&M. Yeah. Even biochem, we really thought was something. <laughs> it wasn't anything, not even close, child's yeah. play. Mm -hmm. So grad school really equipped us to be able to study for long hours. Um, yeah. We definitely got into the habit of doing that for MCAT, but grad school was a whole nother ballpark. Um, just being in the library, just sticking it out and trying your best to really understand that material. It was just like a different level of studying because you knew, you know your goals, like you know where you're trying to go. and. I mean, I always say, like, it's not the end-all, be-all, but it sure did feel like that yeah. in the program. Like, yeah. you just felt like, this is my last yes. chance, like, yeah. type thing. So, um, yeah, just, just being in that kind of environment, the rigor, the challenge, and everything, it really, like, refined us. And That's just... A <laughs> That's a good word. Yeah, just made us prepared for really anything that they could throw at us. <laughs> yeah. um, and... Like we were saying, the the extracurriculars as well. Like we tried to stay active, held leadership positions. Um, so we practice managing time yeah. and balancing those classes with those commitments as well. Mm -hmm. um, volunteering and yeah, 
I just think it was definitely that coursework that really did it. That was the experience that I think prepared us for med school because we will tell you now. We're not saying that medical school is a walk in the park, but that shock mm -hmm. factor isn't there. Yeah, like we're not that's yeah like that's true it's true like we we can't deny that like that's true. that moment of like you open that powerpoint and you're just seeing like itty bitty font and all yeah. these pathways like that didn't really phase us because yeah. we've already been there done that Ooh, grad school i i'm so grateful for if there's anything like that i'm grateful for because it sure does keep the anxiety down just yeah. a bit at least you yeah. know you're not going crazy because like i've done this before yeah and a lot of it repeats Mm -hmm. A lot of it repeats. Actually, like, to really answer that as well, I think one thing that we have to emphasize is that when we say it simulates medical school, we're not lying. Like, not at all. this cardio block that we're in, we learned about yeah. preload, afterload, ejection yeah. fraction. Like, we've all seen it before. Yeah. We've seen, seen it before in one way or another. So, it's kind of like... I wish I could say it's just one big review. That would be lying because it's still medical school. <laughs> like it's yeah. still medical school. Yeah, um, let's say that grad school was sixty percent of medical school, but it was sixty percent. You know, yeah. now they've added the forty yeah. percent. But we have seen it before, yeah. and we do feel that forty percent. Oh yeah, we, we feel do. it. We mm -hmm. definitely feel it. But yeah. that shock factor, like yeah. Elizabeth said, is. God, I really am grateful that we did that because everything she said, mm -hmm. like, I don't, I don't know if just opening like first day of school, <laughs> my spirit would have been ready. It would have been ready. Can I'm not, I can't imagine. Undergrad? Not in that? Not that, <laughs> not, in, not in, maybe some people, some people I some know, people like I know some people went to undergrad and they were pre-med for real. Like they were <laughs> your true pre-med student and like they were looking they saw the first day of medical school on their first day of undergrad i know <laughs> there's some people like that that wasn't me we just want to say like <laughs> and all of this don't be scared yeah. you know if, if you are a pre-med coming straight from medical school you are equipped for this you are god has given you the grace yes to conquer it yeah. from the jump seriously we didn't have that grace it's okay yeah. <laughs> but you you're gonna make it yeah so i just wanted to throw that out there don't be scared yeah. our classmates scared. are doing good yeah they're, they're, doing, doing they're doing great they're doing amazing, amazing. so we, yeah. we're just talking because we saw yeah. yeah this is our experience yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay this is a funny question explain your non-traditional route to medicine when speaking to family or friends or don't <laughs> i say don't to be honest, I agree. Like, I agree. There's no point. There's really, really no point because at the end of the day, you're, the point is to get into medical school, all this, oh yeah, I'm doing in between, that this is a gap year and I'm going to be doing it. It just simulates medical school. No. They don't that, know. They, they don't, don't under, <laughs> Right? <laughs> they ask, just say, be bold in it. I'm going to grad school. I'm going to get my master's and medical school is coming up. Don't. All this like, yeah, it's going to help improve my chance. No, it just, it gets too complicated. Just yeah. be bold. I'm going to grad school if they ask. But if they don't ask, child. I'm in school. I'm in school. Yeah. But I will say, this is something I like gained appreciation <laughs> of while in grad school and like doing other things in between school. Um, don't like under or like downplay mm -hmm. any stage of this journey. Because all of it. Yes. All of it is huge like all of it you you have the whole journey is a you really unique opportunity that That's a lot right, of people yeah. don't have access to yeah, and right. wouldn't even dream mm -hmm. to have access to so um whether you're like an undergrad you know say for mcat or just in grad school because you know you needed to go to grad school like don't downplay that because getting a master's degree that's a it's master's no degree. Fee. That's not. We a have small two fee. degrees. Two degrees. Two. Not a lot of people can say that. It's gonna and say MD, comma MS. Yeah. It's gonna. <laughs> there's gonna be some commas. Okay. And a lot of people don't have have that and mm -hmm. wouldn't even like have access to it. Like mm -hmm. not even dream of it. So mm -hmm. don't downplay it. If, if if sometimes I wish I was more like bold and like proud to say like yeah I'm in grad school I'm getting my master's in biomedical science period like sometimes I wish 
I said it like yeah. that because it's a master's degree. You could do stuff without yeah, that degree as well. Yeah, I definitely ended up getting a job. Mm-hmm. Like, she sure did. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so, my master's definitely helped me with that. Yeah, so be... And so, for some people, where you're at is, like, their dream end goal. So don't downplay that's it. That's true That's something that, like, I was made aware of and felt kind of bad, like, how someone had to kind of open my eyes to that because I was really even undergrad graduation I'm like child let me study for my MCAT like it's just graduation <laughs> then masters came I'm like you know what just when can I start medical school you know but I was really overlooking these major blessings and milestones so yeah, yeah. I completely agree with yeah. you so if you want to you want to share with your family and be be proud of it that's a huge accomplishment not everyone gets accepted to grad school that's true too. Mm-hmm. All the stuff that we're talking, don't think it's a walk in the park, it's friends. Not. Don't people nicely get rejected? <laughs> I, I did. <laughs> I mean, like, we're being honest. Like yeah. it happens. Yeah. So when you get in and you get an opportunity to make things right with your GPA or wh- whatever reason you're going, mm-hmm. celebrate that. Celebrate it. That is a big deal. Oh. Next question says, "How did you deal with self doubt about your journey?" Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> we had each other. <laughs> Honestly, we did have each other. Like, like, thank God we had each other because when the going got tough, like, I could just look up and just see Yami right there with me. Like, I've told y'all before, like, we studied for our MCAT together. Like, first, like, out the gate, our MCAT, we did that together. So even when scores weren't looking right and the practice questions were just getting frustrating, that car's passage Mm. just wasn't adding up you know we could encourage each other to keep going there was many opportunities for self-doubt and it definitely did creep in Mm -hmm. definitely um but i just focus on your own race and i'll kind of throw it in there like i said we started this whole thing together but you as you guys have heard throughout this video like we kind of did things just a little bit differently mm-hmm. i went to grad school first and she went to grad school after we did completely different stuff like she worked while i was in school i worked mm-hmm. when she was in school it was it wasn't necessarily in sync mm-hmm. but guess where we are like right in the exact spot at the exact time mm-hmm. so i always say it like just focus on your on your dreams focus on your lane um when that self-doubt creeps in, remind yourself of why you're there. Surround yourself with like-minded thinkers um, and people that are aspiring for the same things as you yeah. as well. Um, people that have done it before. Yeah. Um, I think that's also really important. Major. Um, major, major, yeah. major important. People that look like you. Yeah. Um, if you're black and you don't see, you know, like I know that it doesn't, where you're very far and wide like it does we don't come very often so if you find like a group of black pre-meds mm-hmm. or you know just people that you connect with yeah. surround yourself with with that um and maybe people that didn't have it as easy either because yeah. that is encouragement we talk about that all the time yeah like mentorship is mm-hmm. wonderful yeah and just having role models um that are like above you and also on in like the lane with you you know mm-hmm. or in the lane next to you mm-hmm. like major major key because mm-hmm. self-doubt i think is inevitable yeah they kind of create 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 the journey to pump you with self-doubt to weed out people who are are not gonna who are gonna like be crippled by that self-doubt yeah you can't you can't fall in this journey and that it's set up that way exactly. you're gonna have self-doubt exactly somebody asked if we had imposter syndrome i guess in grad school or like now in grad school i sure did but it wasn't about my academics actually mm. it was about my leadership roles <laughs> i really yeah. had like major imposter syndrome about some of the like one of the positions i held um and an organization i was in i just felt like am I supposed to be here? Yeah. Like a lot of my um, colleagues were like PhD candidates and they were just so like organized and had such great vision for the organization. I just felt so like I just didn't belong there. Um, but I did. I don't know why I felt like that. Um, but academic wise, because like we all, we had all been rejected in some way or another. Some way. Um, <laughs> I, you know, like a lot of my classmates had already applied to medical school and rejected. Yeah. I, I didn't apply to medical school by that point, but 
I knew if I tried, maybe it wouldn't have worked out. Mm -hmm. Who knows? So we had all kind of experienced that feeling of like not enough, mm -hmm. been rejected. Maybe we we're like just slightly above average type thing. So it was kind of hard to feel like an imposter when everybody is here kicking it with you yeah. in the same exact boat, you know? Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. That is a good point. There's imposter syndrome. There's so many, like, syndromes where you feel like you don't belong. But I feel the same. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think I felt it um, when it comes to academics. But definitely when I was working. Yeah. Why? It's like, it's like positions. Like, why? Role. Like, I'm, responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. There are some things, like, I know I had a good degree. Yeah. I know I did. Mm -hmm. But then I was just like, ah. They don't know like I'm not qualified to be here <laughs> so, um, but yeah I I'm not, not really in school even now yeah. and it's because of the people I think we surround ourselves with mm -hmm. that encouragement when those feelings of self-doubt come in mm -hmm. and all kind of negative feelings mm -hmm. and anything that's gonna make you feel less than or incapable mm -hmm. um, we have great people yeah, around us definitely. before us looking to us so yeah. it's it makes us feel like valued it makes us feel um like if they could do it we can do it if they made it we can make it and i will say like another reason why we're probably not experiencing it right now I, we always say like it could be because of covid and the fact that we are oh, online yeah. so yeah, we're not yeah, really yeah, surrounded yeah. with our classmates yes. like that so we're not hearing that oh yeah yes. i already did like that whole entire section i already did the practice questions and locked all the anki cards yeah like yes. you know we're not hearing any of that. absolutely thank, God. thank you jesus because i'm like please just, that's a major thing. That's a major thing. So yeah, it's really just us. <laughs> that's so, and we say we say that all the time. Yeah. Like we're grateful that we started online because yeah. we're not we're not we're not seeing what all the books you're carrying, yeah. everything you read, all the all articles extra, you wrote. Research, we're not. Yeah. I don't know what anybody's doing except for yeah. this girl. <laughs> and sometimes, like you yeah, know, like we're just like we're just in our books. Yeah, um, that's yeah, a very. <laughs> very true point. yeah and then just the confidence like just knowing that we belong here we really believe that god placed us here for he a did. reason and we have worked so hard towards this like it's time you know it's time we just have to be confident in that yeah um regardless of whatever our past says like we are here for a reason they give us a mission for a reason and we just have to be confident in that yeah. and i hope that you guys will feel the same way yeah know that you're there for a reason yeah. somebody gave you that chance because they saw something in you and yeah, just believe that. So, um, next question: <laughs> What did you both do to end up in the same med school? That's amazing. Oh, it is amazing. We prayed <laughs> and fasted. We glory. <laughs> Oh, glory. Literally. <laughs> if you want to hear the story, if you want the truth, <laughs> like that's it. I. That could be a whole nother video if we really want to talk about it. But we really did pray about it, like. It was it was the Lord. It yeah. was the Lord because the chances of getting into medical school, like just this school alone, hmm. thousands of applications, <laughs> like six thousand applications type thing. They only interviewed four hundred, only accepted fifty five, and that's like applicants from Texas, out of the state, <sighs> and. We both end up right here at the exact same time. Where it surprises you. Tell, tell like, me that's my God. Like, my God. Ain't no way we could have done that. We would have nicely been like, oh, I'm in Nebraska. Why well, would we in Wisconsin? And we would have been, been giddy as heck. We would have been just fine. I, we really do believe it was God's doing. Mm -hmm. Definitely. There's nothing I can really tell you <laughs> about that except that. So. <laughs> Next question says, what changes or sacrifices did you have to make to get to where you are? Many. Well, yeah, yeah, because when we, we make the mistake of going on our Insta stories every once in a while. Mistake. <laughs> <That's> huge <laughs> mistake. <laughs> and we're oh. seeing our mates just frolicking in the snow, this is the, the snow-capped <laughs> mountains, or is it water, ocean, body of water, just skiing, jet skiing, left and right, just... But we're here, you know, <laughs> pursuing the career of our dreams. So, yeah, I mean, it's it it took, like, kind of taking a, a, a route that took a lot of time. But, like, we, we're not making any money, like, at all. And we probably won't be making, like, real money for a long, long time. time. Um, 
so that is a sacrifice and I mean when it came down to things like missing parties and stuff like that I mean like yeah if you have stuff to do you have stuff to do yeah. if you have to study you have to study like yeah. matter of fact um, but we also understand that life still goes on like we are um in our 20s only ones we only have this one life to live and I really do think it is possible to balance it yeah. you know just be wise about it if you have an exam tomorrow maybe you shouldn't be going out to your friend's event the day before yeah. that's just wisdom right um but you know if you have a an aunt who's having a baby shower and you really want to attend you know go in study hard the whole week so that you can have that time uh, maybe a couple hours to spend with her because those are memories you know yeah. we made yeah. we made sacrifices we made especially sacrifices when they needed to be made. yeah um i guess the most because we are like young single like we have great support system we we're not really like attached to any major responsibilities so i know we've made sacrifices maybe to our social life or like mm -hmm. to some desires we might have had some just stuff like that we have um taken summers to commit to mcat yes okay. Ugh, yeah. those especially mm -hmm. are the like the ones that really pain me, like I just think about all the summers that was like retaking and retaking. <laughs> just like, but anyways, um, those sacrifices for me, I feel like you just have to. I wish it didn't take me so long to just get accustomed to that because that's just what we're signed up for. I actually just thought of something. Mm -hmm. We we have sacrificed. I can say yeah. that we sacrificed our love lives. Oh, for sure. Yeah, that is a bigger sacrifice because that as for spending time with friends, yeah, we did that. Hanging yeah. out, we did that. Like, yeah, but love life, yeah, that was something that I feel like I deliberately kept my eyes closed yeah, and down in the true. books because relationships are a big responsibility and yeah. it does take a lot out of you. At this point, we just believe in God will just deliver our husbands right at our doorstep, Amazon Prime, mm -hmm. you know, because especially with this COVID situation, like, who knows? Who knows? But <laughs> that is. Just don't even think about it. We're just pursuing the career of our dreams, okay? Yeah. That's just what I tell myself. And the guy that is for us will just come we'll right in our path. Right in our path. As we go. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. <laughs> Aw, this was, this is not a question, but you both are so inspiring. I look up to you for my own journey. Aww. And that is really, really, really sweet. We really appreciate that. I'm so glad. Oh my gosh. Like, that just really warms my heart because yeah. we, like, I, Yamio, like we are not shy to share our journey with whoever asked yeah. um, because we know that it's not a cookie cutter kind of path. Like there's no formula to this. We cannot stress enough. We yeah. know people between the two yeah. of us that had stellar grades, 3.8 and above, mm -hmm. five tens and above mm -hmm. that did not get one yeah. interview. That did not get one interview. It's just important that people realize that, hey, like you can come in with this and still be able to get this like mm -hmm. you know it just requires passion passion for the profession passion for the people that you're going to be serving um determination to stay on track because it will get challenging go to masters go to grad school retake classes um even if you have a below a 3.0 like if Anything this is what is you possible. want yeah i have a friend who had a 2.5 2.5 2.6 2 graduating undergrad like she was done but yet now she just got like her second or third interview to medical school so what she did she went back and she took retook classes she's in a great grad program right now master's program um like what we did and she's killing the game like she's doing really well so anything is possible my question is a bit long for the sticker but i want to know how you created your school list based on your grad gpa and undergrad gpa i'm in a master's program right now and my gpa is high but my undergrad gpa wasn't there's lots of data out um for school averages for gpa and mcat but how did you make a school list with differing gpas if either of y'all dealt with that mm -hmm. so essentially like how do we create that list how do we select the schools that we felt like you know would, would answer us. <laughs> That's a great question. Great, great question. That's the reality of the game. There yeah. are over over 200 medical schools, and they are not all made equally. Mm -hmm. Let's just not keep it all. frank. Um, 
You have the Harvards of the world and you have the not Harvards of the world, but guess what? You're still gonna be a doctor at the end of the day. I ain't never heard a patient come into a clinic asking, so where did you get your degree again? No, you just wanna go to a program that is gonna equip you, that you love, um, that will prepare you for medicine, and yeah. Um, but to answer your question, we used, what was it called? Um, that, that file. Yeah, it was. It's on W. Yeah, MSAR. Yes, that's it. Oh, the MSAR. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that yeah, is what it's called. MSAR, yeah. Medical school Girl, admissions. Good. Child's good. branded in my head. Wow. <laughs> the service that we yeah. use is called MSAR. It's a medical school admission requirement. It's something that you can just purchase. So it's a one year subscription for about $28 and it is excellent. It's gonna give you the breakdown of every single medical school in the country. It gave you the breakdown of their tuition, out of state, in state, whether they accept out of state applicants. Yeah. And how many out of state applicants yeah. they accept if they do. Those are very important details because, yeah. you know, the last thing you want to do is to apply to all these out of state schools that haven't accepted an out of state student in the past so, five years. <laughs> you know? Not even checking for you. Not even checking for you. Or, you know, maybe they only accepted five yeah. out of 200. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, so you have to ask yourself yeah. if you are applying to schools like that you probably are gonna have to have like killer stats yeah uh, because they're not gonna want to take up a spot for their in-state yep. applicants for you if you're not gonna come in and make some magic happen okay yeah. um so i we really recommend um getting that service because it really gives you the breakdown mm -hmm. it also tells you about the demographic yeah. makeup of the class how many women are in the class how many yeah. men are in the class how many african americans yeah. are in the class how many african americans were interviewed yeah. how many were accepted how many ended up going like those are all details that are not going to be found on the school's website that's only accessible through that msar and you know mcat scores the oh, average the mcat one. scores that they had yeah, yeah. Average MCAT score is average GPA because if you have a certain MCAT score, you have a certain GPA, like it would behoove you to apply to schools like, you know, you have the chance of getting into applying to medical school is incredibly expensive. And the last thing you want to do is to essentially throw your money away to a school that probably won't check for you. And that's just a matter of fact. Yeah, we mm -hmm. definitely utilize mm -hmm. the MSAR like fully. Yeah. Um, but something like, Thankfully, we had like mentors that believed in us also because you, although those statistics and um, on paper, like they're a great guide, but we still have a big God. Mm -hmm. So like a very, big God. a very big God. So you take you, you want to use that. Well, I, let me say for me, like we use that to apply to schools that had applications coming in that looked a little bit like my application coming in so that kind of was just baseline right and then you at least for me like I shot above mm -hmm. I shot above just like I have dream schools I have like like dream schools just apply to those too and also schools that I felt maybe not the information on MSAR but some of the things like the community was doing or like stuff from their website that um, I was attracted to I just applied to them because I felt like I could see myself in that, that environment even if my stats didn't really look like theirs so mm -hmm. that the MSAR is a great great tool um, just to help you like gauge and like make um, I guess reasonable just have like a, a tangible like a list, a realistic yeah. list. Um, but like you take it with a, um, you know, give yourself, mm -hmm. give yourself some room to mm -hmm. go beyond what mm -hmm. the status quo might say. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Go for it. Okay. Um, and between the two of us, I think I applied to like twenty five schools. How many did you apply to? Twenty five, twenty two. It was above. It was between twenty and twenty five. Yeah, I think. I probably apply to like 20. 20, yeah. yeah. They usually say like 20 or more. Yeah. So just throwing that out there as well. Um, I will also leave a link down below for that MSAR if you're interested yeah. in getting that. Um, definitely highly recommend it. Okay, another question. Gap your jobs that y'all did after your program. So Yamio, like how she described, she actually um got went straight into medical school after her grad program so you didn't yes. have another gap year yeah yeah i had um i guess 
two gap years before grad school mm -hmm. where I worked. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you worked, uh, yeah, before grad school. Yeah. So my, my work years were between um, undergrad and graduate school. And what was the question? Just what did we do? Oh. <laughs> um, um, I worked as like a childhood, early childhood education program developer, and that was fun. It was really fun. And then I also worked um, with AmeriCorps. Mm -hmm. um, there was like a Texas hunger initiative that was going on that I worked on that uh, program for. Sometime too. She was feeding the children, y'all. Yeah. It was great. I was so proud of her. Like, where did you go? Like, literally giving breakfast to kids and helping, like, that initiative. So that was really awesome. It was fun. Um, and I substitute yeah. taught, too. Oh, yeah. How did we forget? She was a whole substitute teacher. Yeah. That was, that was fun. I really felt like an actress. <laughs> Ooh, I was like, students. That was fun. That was really fun. <laughs> no, that was an experience. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Um, I did work after graduating. I worked as a research coordinator um, at Baylor College of Medicine out in the medical center, and that was a really cool experience. How to deal with auto filters from schools if your grad and undergrad GPAs were very different? That's a good question. The auto filters, I've heard that before. Yeah. Where like schools will just literally just be like. Yeah. I was gonna say like I have heard about that, but I've, I feel like I've heard more about like this holistic review. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't really too like I wasn't really considering these mm -hmm. auto filters, you mm -hmm. know. Especially with MSAR, like you kind of limit yourself from getting mm -hmm. caught in that. I agree with Yamio. Honestly, um, we can't really speak to that um, because we it it wasn't really much of a concern. Maybe it should have been. I don't know, um, but. Like how she said, medical schools are really focusing on holistic review, and mm -hmm. we believe it. Like, we yeah. have seen that change, um, especially at our school. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess to kind of, like, just work around that system, I would just really make sure, like, the other part of your applications are important. Excuse me, a lot of people tend to neglect experience yeah. um just like the personal experiences like the volunteering the clinic work the yeah. shadowing um yeah. the organizations like do not neglect that part and really make sure that is like as strong as you can make it because that does also add to um add to your application mm -hmm. um they want to accept students that are well-rounded that are not just a gpa whether it is high or it's low. Like, they want students to have experience that have seen the practice of medicine, have seen it up close, and still want to do it. Yeah. Make sure the rest of your application is very strong. That personal statement is strong. Um, your experiences are strong. Your letters of rec are strong. Um, so that there's something that will catch their eye. Um, we know that not all schools do the auto filter thing. Yeah. It has to be obvious because a range of people get into medical school. So... I'm sorry, I wish we could answer like that a little yeah. bit better, but that's that was our experience. We just focused on the holistic review and it ended up working out for us. So, yeah. and hopefully it worked out for you too. Yeah, I will say grad schools, mm -hmm. they did. Oh, have really? Like some kind of filter. Like, oh. with their, I mean, they're not like a actual filter where they wouldn't even look at your name, but they did say like, we're not accepting. Like you have to have these certain um, GPA or scores to even apply. You know what? You're right. Yeah, grad um, school, I remember seeing that. You're like, right, you're right, you're schools. right. Um, yeah. And th those were, like, on the website. And I know, like, my first time applying to grad school, I saw it. And I was just like, yeah, I mean, but look at the rest of me. But I will say maybe those things were real. Like, that GPA was for real. They're not going to accept me. And with my with the GPA I had and the MCAT score that I had at the time, so I don't know if that's the same as the auto filter though. And um, yeah, like I I do think like because now that I'm thinking about it, like when I talked to some faculty in my grad school, they were like, yeah, if you didn't make this and this, like they really focus on the anatomies. Like if you yeah. took an anatomy before, they want to see you make like a certain grade. Yeah. Um, your MCAT, they want to see that you've made above a 500 tech type thing but again like even in those programs I would have I've um, talked to students that didn't necessarily have that 
but still got in. So I'm like, okay, well then the something truth. has to be, you know, what's the truth? So, yeah. so I know I would still go for it. Yeah. yeah. For grad school, it might be a little stricter. Like the what's on the yeah, website. Yeah, and that makes sense because yeah. they're only accepting an X amount of students. Yeah. Like grad school is very like clear cut, but medicine, there's just so many more facets to yeah. it that I can see them definitely like kind of bending the rules a little bit mm-hmm. to to really get the best student that they can get. Well, the last question that I got actually was a DM and it's a really long DM so I'll just summarize it <laughs> for y'all but this is for those that that are probably already in grad school or um, for those of you that are looking to get into grad school like I think this will be good advice for the future but essentially he made a C in one of his courses anatomy to be exact which he said was actually a um six hour credit class so um yeah so he was asking if you know we thought that it it was worth retaking Mm -hmm. um or you know just continuing it um with the idea that one c shouldn't really stop you from getting in which yeah so um we wanted to like take a little bit of time to answer that as our last question today um but yeah um yeah, like, it is It is definitely a difficult place to be in because, like, to retake a class, depending on when the class was um, held, like, maybe you'll have to do it in the summer or even come back to that, the like, whole semester. the whole semester mm-hmm. or something like that. So retaking a class is definitely, like, no easy decision to make. Yeah. Um, and I think from what he described, like, it didn't sound like it's required. It's more of highly recommended. Mm. So um, one thing that we know about grad school though is that c's aren't exactly um as as i don't want to say the word tolerated or as it's not as much like grace for them yeah a a grace for them as they were in undergrad you can make like a c or or two or three or even more than that (laughs) in undergrad and still be able to make it out and and get your degree and move on Mm -hmm. but in grad school and that goes for any program whether yeah. it's communications public health biomedical science like c's you Absolutely. really want to avoid making them if you can yeah and especially in anatomy so like we had some faculty that would tell you like okay if you made a c in epidemiology you can kind of play it off because um maybe it's just not the most like the 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 course that medical school medical school admissions are really focusing mm-hmm. on um but for something like anatomy yeah. you know we probably would recommend retaking it because, um, you know, you really want to have that foundation. We talked about that earlier, how anatomy here is just so intense. And they honestly expect you to have, like, a a background in it. And it's ironic because anatomy is not a pre-med course. (laughs) Thank God we had it. But, you know, like, it isn't pre-med requirement. So um, if you make a C, I guess it just goes to show that maybe that foundation isn't as strong. And retaking it would probably help you in the long run not just for an admission but for your own sake yes <laughs> so that absolutely. you can survive in that course absolutely yeah and that was a great answer mm-hmm. um and it, i guess in this case where it it might not be like absolute requirement for you to retake a c if you're grad school who and it's a program that's set up for you to go to medical school and they're saying like they're highly recommending it it's probably because there's like evidence or like mm-hmm. history that like you you might it might hinder you mm-hmm. in your in your process so um i i truly like to believe that like our grad school faculty advisors like they're in our best interest even more so than the undergrad advisors and faculty may have been because they don't really trust that we're pre-med for real for real <laughs> <laughs> but um in grad school like they're really or they ought to be. I hope that's the case for you all, but they ought to be there for your best interest. So if they're mm-hmm. highly recommending it, it's for a reason. Yeah. So um, they they want they they want you to go to medical school essentially, mm-hmm. and maybe they know that that C might hinder you, or you might have to like really explain it, or like just like it might just cause you more havoc in the end. Mm-hmm. Um, but what Elizabeth said about like doing it for you. Mm-hmm. Please like do mm-hmm. it for you because I know for me in undergrad there's some C's I had and I was like you know what I got that C like but I still feel like I knew this stuff but in grad school like 
a C, I would trust that it's because I didn't really know the stuff that well. And even the C's I had in undergrad that I knew, like, child, <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> I'm glad I got a C because the way I understand it was some F material, okay? Yeah. <laughs> um, with those, I went and I happily retook them because mm -hmm. I know, like, I'm going to need it. Yeah, so, you did retake some uh, Yeah, I retook some yeah. classes that I didn't necessarily have to, but because... so. Essentially, like, you know, you know how you feel about that C and I would follow your conviction. But in grad school, I would really suggest you follow your that, those high recommendations like those. Yeah. If they're really emphasizing it, um, I would. Yeah. And it's a six hour course mm -hmm. that's heavy it's gonna that's really very tank heavy that GPA. Yeah. And this is the time for you to show them yes. like, hey. I am a new and improved yeah. applicant, so yeah, like that's a lot of um, that's so that's a lot of credit. Hours, yeah, six. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, that's heavy. yeah. We would we would take it again. Yeah. Um, and if you are in the the position where you just happen to not take it again, you just got that C, you're looking at it, you ought to study for your MCAT. Make sure that MCAT is yeah. awesome, out of this world, like. Just really, really make sure other parts yeah. of your application are stellar. But even then, I would still yeah. retake it because yeah. this is your second chance. Yeah, we yeah. really see grad school as a second chance. Mm -hmm. We really, really, we felt that way going in, and we still believe like it's really a new opportunity, a fresh new start. Fresh new so, start. I guess you decide what you want to have on that fresh new slate. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I would, I would take it again. Yeah, yeah, agreed. If it was undergrad, child, I'd be like, girl, it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> but grad, grad school, school, yeah, definitely take it again. Yeah, so that was our very last question. We have come down to the end of this video. I hope it's not too, too lengthy, but we had a lot of questions, and we really wanted to make sure our answers were nice and thorough yeah. um, that you could refer back to. Um, feel free to share this video with any friends, any pre-meds out there that may have had some of these uh, questions about grad school. And yeah, this was fun. It was. Yeah, too. it was really fun. And we just really hope that this video serves as encouragement to y'all. We, again, just really want to show you guys that it is not perfect. There are many applicants that are currently in medical school that were not perfect on paper, mm -hmm. but still got in because there was just something about them that let that admissions panel know that mm -hmm. we can trust that this, this student is going to be a great physician one day. So remember that. Whatever you have to do to make sure that that, sh that shines, um, do it. Whether it's volunteering, shadowing, um, research, um, retaking classes, and it may not even be through grad school. You can do a self like self led self led post back, back. Yeah. where you can literally retake classes on your own. I think that's a good point to remind everyone mm -hmm. because grad school is expensive mm -hmm. and like Elizabeth said, we're they're just trying to see that you will make a great doctor. And mm -hmm. a lot of that is measured by resilience. Mm -hmm. So you t doing taking your own initiative for whatever is within your means mm -hmm. to, to demonstrate that is is always going to be beneficial to you. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're really, really happy and we hope that um, this video was helpful for y'all. Um, and yeah, Yummy, you did a great job, friend. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I was nervous. No, no reason to be nervous. And of course, y'all already know I got to plug my girl's podcast, Ridden with Yams. It's the best on the block. Ooh. Hot stuff over here. Um, Y'all need to download her podcast, subscribe to her podcast. She is super passionate about women's health and just becoming a better her. And you get to kind of like hear her journey, hear her, um, I guess, just like audio diary, you know? And she just has like great um, shows, great people to come on and interview as well. So if you're interested in that, definitely check it out. Even if you're not, check it out. Go yeah, and subscribe. Go ahead and let it play in yes, the background. Exactly. <laughs> um, great, great stuff. And yeah, feel free to follow us on Instagram as well. We will leave our social media down below. And yeah, if y'all want to see a video similar to this, just asking about just pre-made topics in general, um, in the future, let us know and we can sit down and film that for you um, in the near future if that is what y'all want to see. And if you have any additional questions at all, the comment box is 
open for y'all to go ahead and ask questions. Like I said, my social media will be down below, so feel free to DM um, me as well. And we will answer them to the best of our abilities based on our own unique experiences. And yeah. Yay. Yeah, so that is that on that. Thank you guys again for sticking to the very end of this video. I really, really, really appreciate it. Do not forget to subscribe, comment, and like. Again, share this video with your friends and anyone who will watch. And yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.